This meeting is being recorded. Welcome to the CEN show, the voice of the world community. We added the world community because I'm about to start uh, getting guests from around the world. Uh, I have one in particular, uh, Mr. Niagara, who was a former teacher at Centennial High School. I used to teach with him. I'm calling him real soon. He'd probably be our first guest out of the country, which is he he lives in Kenya now. So we we we're gonna we're gonna tap into the world community here. All right, the C the CEN show and Conscious Corner are products of the website communityeducationnetwork.com. So let me show everybody the website because I want people to start uh, going to the forum and we need to have some good dialogue in this forum here. So let me show the website here. So here's the website and we had on Monday, we had Shea Cotton on Conscious Corner. Tonight we have Miss Meeks, Rihanna Meeks. And let's go to the form. I wanna show everybody this form. I didn't show it before, but I wanna show everybody again. Here's the form. And you can see we, we started off real good when we started the website. So it goes back a year. And there hasn't been any activity lately. So I wanna encourage people on this panel right here to sign up, all you need is an email address. You sign up and, and put something in the form where we can dialogue with each other and uh, share some ideas other than this podcast. So it's easy to sign up. Like I said, you just need an email address. Okay, folks, let's move right along here. I am your host, Rasuki Mascani. Tonight's guest is Brianna Meeks. She's a teacher and a realtor. I met Brianna this fall of 2021. She did her student teaching in my class. And of course she did an excellent job. So that's why I had to get her on here because <laughs> she's an, an exceptional person in my opinion. Uh, good evening, Ms. Meeks. How oh, are you? We have two of us here. So you're talking to me? Yeah, and and, and uh, mom. Miss uh, Benita Meeks, good evening to you too. Good so, evening. So I'm pretty sure you can uh, make a contribution here. So we're gonna, uh, we'll get to you, but we're gonna get to your daughter first. So uh, Miss Meeks, tell us a little bit more about yourself. <laughs> okay, so um, ooh, I feel like that's such a hard question because it's like, you know, putting yourself on the spot, but. Yeah. I am, um, let's see, I grew up in Paramount, so just the city next door to Compton, uh, California, and uh, um, went to undergrad at Santa Barbara, got a degree in economics, and I uh, always knew that I wanted to focus on um, something to do with financially helping myself as well as others. Uh, just didn't necessarily know what, especially, you know, when you come out of um, college, a lot of kids are kind of all over the place. And um, so I started off, actually, my first job was actually a recruiter. Ugh. Didn't necessarily like that. I did that for a few months, then moved to the fashion industry. And although I liked the creativity of it, I found that it wasn't something that was going to make any sense for me um, to I, I felt that it was like not going to be long term, if that makes sense. Like, okay, this is cool, this is creative, but it's not helping others in a way that's going to financially make them better. It's actually hurting them in the way because they're buying clothes that aren't going to be do, any, do anything for them long term. So then I um, actually first got into real estate. So I became an agent um, and I've been doing that for the past uh, four years, going on five years this year. And, and then I also uh, decided that I wanted to come, go into teaching. I actually have a lot of um, family who's into teaching on my father's side. And are you, aren't there any teachers on your side, Mom? No, huh? we don't have any teachers on your side. Uh, just uh, Linda, my sister-in-law. Oh, okay, yes. There's a few teachers on my mom's side. But 
the overwhelming majority is on my yeah, father's side. Majority. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I think the idea of being able to inspire others really fuels um, or motivates me, I should say. So that's kind of like a little, you know, big little backstory. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if I heard heard why why did you choose real estate. What was the uh, oh so I chose real estate. Well, the ultimate goal when I sat down and I thought about, you know, after I left fashion, I said, okay, well, what do I really want to do? Because I really don't want to be ping ponging in industries. And it really said it really came down to financially bettering others. Remember, I was saying when I got into fashion, I realized as creative as it was and as fun, quote unquote, as it was, people were spending their money on things that were not financially. We're not, we're not financial investments, right? Mm -hmm. They were buying clothes, they would wear them year or two, throw them away, or they'd get rid of them. But at least 90% of the stuff that they buy. Some things are investments, but most aren't. And so I was like, okay, so what can I change to go into what's gonna actually financially help people or, or be some sort of an investment? And so ultimately that's what it was as far as real estate was me getting into the industry to help people and, um, well, and also a big factor was the fact that I bought my own place. I have to be honest. I bought my place at 23, turning 24, a little small old condo. Uh, my mom actually uh, was the person who did all the paperwork. She's an underwriter. I just financially purchased it. And it kind of drove me into saying, okay, well, I know that if I could do this, that I could get others to do this as well. And, you know, I know I had my mom's help, but I was like, let me use what her knowledge, what I've gone through to ultimately help people do the exact same thing. Okay, so let's get into that then a little bit. Mm -hmm. What do you actually do as far as a real estate agent? Um, I help buyers and I help sellers. So I do both parts. So I help the, the overwhelming majority of what I do is buyers. So um, probably 70% of my transactions are buyers themselves. People who are, most of them, again, are first-time buyers. Um, they are probably like 60% of that is first-time buyers. So people who have no idea what to do as far as the um, home buying process. And so that's ultimately what I do is I look and I help people from the very, very, very beginning stages who say, okay, I want to buy a house. I have no idea what to do. So I tell them what to do, how they can get financing, what potential programs they can um, find to help them. If a program works, cool. If it doesn't, we get financing, we go look at homes, we get them in the contract, and then we get them to keys. So that's ultimately what I do. Okay, so now, uh, what what does an underwriter do? Because uh, uh -huh. mom is on here. Mom, you mm -hmm. want to answer that? What does an underwriter do? An underwriter assesses and evaluates a mortgage loan, your mortgage loan. We determine whether your your credibility, your assets, your income uh, is is sufficient for whatever type of loan you're applying for. So when you apply for a mortgage loan and you receive this letter that says we need A, B, C, and D, or sorry, we can't approve you because of A, a or B or whatever the circumstance is, that's the underwriter. We do an analysis of income, credit, collateral. Um, oh, the three C's, yeah. Credit, income, collateral. I should know this. It'll come to me. When, it's funny when you're doing something, it's second nature. That's why. Yeah, right, 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 right. I'm glad I'm not at work. <laughs> but what we do is uh, when you provide all your documentation for a mortgage loan, because there's a lot of documentation. It's a little overwhelming, but in the beginning, of course, you have a salesperson, uh, a loan person, and they tell you what's required for the loan type that you apply for, whether it's an FHA loan, a VA loan, a conventional loan, a jumbo loan, all of those categories require uh, separate documentation, whether it be income or assets, depending on the loan type. So your documentation is submitted from the loan officer to the lender. Of course, it goes through a process, the processor reviews it. And from there, it goes to the underwriter. The underwriter evaluates and makes a decision uh, based upon guidelines, based upon creditworthiness, 
things such as that. So we make the decision whether or not you um, are qualified for the loan, for the mortgage so, loan. So basically you're the yay or nay person. Yes. Okay. Yes, <laughs> right. yes, yes, yes. All right. Thanks for that. All right. Oh, so, and can I put something out there? Brianna, you didn't say anything about your book. Oh, no, because it's in the book. I was going to mention it when I went to go get it. <laughs> it's in the living room. Oh, you have it? Okay. Mom with the plug. She got it, of course. Yes. Yeah, so I have a book that, so basically to sum up, which, yeah, there it is. I basically took in like, everyone was asking me a lot of questions like, oh, you know, what can I do to get started? So I just threw it in this little, small little book that you could buy on Amazon. And that's basically what I did. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. You know, I can allow you to share the screen. And if you could pull that up for us and I could put, oh, you could yeah. put it on it. So, so while you're doing that, I could ask the next question. I know, okay, that, go ahead. I'm still here. I know that she said, let me give you the ability to share the screen. Yeah, hold on, let me see. Um, okay, I gave you the ability. So now you okay. said you have a lot of educators on your father's side, right? Yes, yeah. correct. So, so what, what inspired you besides that, and it's sort of natural, what inspired you to get into education? You know, it's funny because when I was, um, you know, even a few years ago, if you had told me, oh, you're going to become a teacher, I would have said, you right. are not. Like, there is no way I'm not going to be bothered with kids. But of course, as you mature and you get older, you realize how much educating, um, especially our community, let's be honest, uh, needs. Um, you find that um, a lot of others have free game, and the free game comes from at home a lot of times, right? Like, you know, mom owns a business, then they're able to tell their kids about businesses, and they're able to tell them, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, and I find that a lot of us don't have that. We don't understand about investments. We don't understand about, I mean, just the basic um, things um, to be able to be successful in life. And so, of course, I don't know all the answers. I'm not sitting here like, oh, I'm the best thing ever. But I really decided to get into it because um, I felt that it was important that I not only am motivated by the inspiration of others, but inspire others to want more out of life and to be shown more out of life than just the small communities that they're from. Um, because, you know, a perfect example is Centennial. A lot of those kids um, don't even know much more than the, the the few blocks radius in which they live, go to go to you know go to school, go to the grocery store, and their aunt's house or so. Um, and so, I feel some sort of like calling to show those that want to be shown. Of course, you can you know like you said, lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Um, that there is a big big world out there. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do from what you just told us, I'm gonna see if anybody have any questions or comments okay. yet. I'm gonna start with a, a historian, Joe Hendrick. Brother Joe. Hello. Okay, thanks, thanks. Okay, Brother Machenda. No, not at this time. Okay. Brother Doctor? Can you show the book? So I can oh, yeah, the title. yeah. I can share my screen now. Yeah, I gave you the ability to show it. Share it, yeah. Mom, why is she doing that? Do you have any you question right for her? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so this is pretty much it right here. Um... You can see this is the cover as a mom was showing right here. And then uh, this is a few pages that give you kind of um, a little screenshot or whatever. This is the back cover. And um, that's pretty much it. And it's pretty much just a, a really truncated version of how to get started on buying a home. So there's a few um, uh, programs in there actually that you can, um, you can, uh, 
farmed, like, you know, like, I don't know if people have heard of the program NACA or they've heard of the program um, that I yes. use, actually. That program's in here as well. And, uh, yep, the WISH program. Uh, um, I forget the other program. There's one that's through the LA County. I think that might be the right. one WISH, where it's up to right. 70 dollars uh, um, basically like a loan on the property or a lien and that's pretty much what this this book is about and as you can see i've got four and a half stars 3.9 star i mean that's not bad you know and that's just that's just people who i don't you know i don't even know these people so that's not like i'm out here faking reviews or anything so oh, that's, yeah that's excellent you're an author too oh i yep. tell you Exactly. <laughs> if I could hey. chime in on that, can I chime go in ahead. on that? Yes, go ahead. Because um, the book also goes into the various uh, forms of uh, qualifications or, or lending uh, 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 assistant programs that we don't know about. A lot of us, you know, when I speak with people that are, you know, a lot of us are afraid. It's the unknown. Oh, I can't afford a house or I can't afford property. I, uh, I don't make enough money. Well, when Brianna bought this condo, she made $35,000 a year. Yes. Right. And I, found, I, I found a program for her that got her a $15,000 grant. And you, people need to be aware that grant is important because grants you don't pay back. They're forgivable, right. but there are stipulations to them being forgiven. You know, you might have to owner occupied 10 years, or it might be until you refi or pay off. Five years. Five years. Owner -occupied. Was five years. Mm -hmm. And I found her that program through a lender. We had done some searching, but a lot of lenders, I currently work for Union Bank, and they have a wish program that a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. And uh, within uh, certain parameters in, L it covers, if you're in LA County, San Diego County, Orange County, and I think there's- one Alameda, there. right? Alameda, right. Uh, you receive $9,000 towards your, towards your closing cost and down. That's a grant. You don't have to pay it back. Um, the other counties are $6,000. They're less, but- this is something that I try to educate us on when I'm when it's brought up in conversation or something such as this, a panel, because we really don't know what's out there. We where where a lot of us are, you know, it's the unknown. I have a girlfriend, it's a nurse, 30 years. Mm. Good mm. money. Good mm. money. Over a hundred thousand, at least a hundred thousand a year now with her time in hasn't bought property. It's, it's just, uh, I think it's afraid, just, you know, just afraid. Fear. But they're, you know, people who work for the city, the city grants their employees money. There's a grant system for educators. Firefighters. Civil Police. service workers. Civil service. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. they, yes. There are so, there's so much money out there to, to give to people towards purchasing a home. But it's the unknown. So it's I try to get it out there as best as I can. And with Brianna, I assisted her and she put it in the book. And it's Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even want to go to that program. I was young right. and silly. I was she was young and she was young and hung over. She was hung over from the night before yeah. they had party. I was like, oh whatever, I'll just go next do time. Do we I'll have to go? There. Right. Exactly. She she said, do we like, have to I'm go? Like, oh, they don't have this program for another six months. Like, oh right. Fine. And they only did the workshop for every, every so many months. And I mm -hmm. said, you know, come on, go, let's just go. And um, it, it turned out to just work out in and, her and, favor. And I also wanted to know, um, in that book, a lot of, towards the end, it really kind of talks about how a big thing in our community, especially, but over, overall, the people with fear, is a lot of people will get caught up on, they can't afford what they want right now, right? Right. right. Okay, I want a million dollar house, but I'm making seventy five thousand dollars a year. Well, that's more than unlikely that you're not going to be able to afford that unless you got four hundred grand in the bank, you know. So people um, get caught up on that, and so it talks about how my little one bedroom, seven hundred and sixty seven square foot condo, nothing fancy about it, no updates. I mean, it was from the sixties, and it wasn't gross or nothing. It was just average really average little place cute but average 
how it netted me a, a net worth of $150,000. In five years. In five years. A net worth, meaning that it was worth $150,000 more than what I paid for it or what I owed on it. And That's it's just, right. it's crazy that people don't even, you know, they get so caught up on, on yes. oh, I need Brand to have houses. five bedroom. Yeah. And, and ultimately yeah. that little small condo got us into this three bedroom, two yeah. bath, 1700 square foot house with a studio in the back now you know so just by starting off real small that's how we were able to well um elevate okay sorry Mr. Boy. I, I, i'm oh, also no, i'm also a, a loan officer yes she is i have, yes, I have is. my my nmls and a notary. So I thought I'd throw that out there. I'm not as mm -hmm. active with <laughs> loans as I could be because I'm busy with underwriting, but- And you do real uh, estate too. You have a real estate license too. Right, and I do have my real estate license. So I'm just, um, you know, those are the fields of work that I'm in. And I can do that when I retire. You know, I there's, uh, I'm sure you all know Evelyn Arnold. Yeah. Do you? You know Evelyn yeah. Arnold? Yes. Yeah, well, they told me my house. Okay. Oh died. yes, I love Francis. That. So Jess on. I'm not yes. Jess on, but uh, I love her. But Francis. Francis. I saw her at a real estate uh, uh, class, and she is the last one left of her family. Her husband passed. Her son mm. passed. Her daughter passed, and she is oh, wow. kicking strong, and she is such an inspiration. Uh, and she's the Arnolds had real estate when I was a kid in the '60s in Compton, right, Amon? Yeah. They've always, well, you've always like I known. Said, I don't know how they. I don't know how I bought this house. That's All I know, they gave me the key. <laughs> you know, uh, and you had a job. I, right? I don't ask no questions. <laughs> I don't ask no questions. And I've been in this house for 20 years, but right. it was with Francis, and he turned yeah. it over to his mom. And his mom worked some magic and yes, yes. I was in the house. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, it's just uh, trying to help the community and help um, people um, understand the the wealth of of property. I mean, yeah. the, the importance of wealth. It's, um, you see a lot of, a lot of rappers now uh, speaking of property wealth and, and, and investing in pro real estate, whereas before, you know, yeah. they went to bling and the jewelry. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they still are. Yeah, they but still are, but at least they're they pretty, moving on to, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, like Warren Buffett said, he said, you buy real estate and you wait, meaning you purchase it and you sit on it and allow it to make money. But it's your largest return in investment that you will ever get. You're not going to get, if you, like for instance, her property, she bought it in five years, she had over $100,000 in equity because of the location, because of the, 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 the demand, you know, that type, all, all those are factors. And you really have to think further ahead than I just, oh, I can't get it, or that isn't what I want. Uh, uh, another thing I'm going to put out there is <laughs> the Latino community is very, very, very savvy with putting their heads together and acquiring real estate. I have been seeing that since I've been underwriting, I've been underwriting since before Brianna was born. A lot of like, us will not do that. Oh, I can't live with my auntie yes. and I live with so-and-so. Yes. They will put their coins together. I have never had a Latino on a loan that just, for instance, just say they didn't qualify. Their income is insufficient. Oh, well, if you can get a co-signer, they always come back with a co-signer. And a, mo a lot of times they apply for loans, multiples, a brother, a brother and, and his brother, two brothers may apply, you know, or two brothers and a dad may apply. And those things, are ways to get in. You just want to get your foot in there. Yeah. And from, you know, like like Warren Buffett said, get property, oh. sit on it and wait because it's okay. going to return. Even if the market crashes, you know, I had a girlfriend, she was saying when the market hit in 2008, it was and whatever. Oh, I would just leave, you know, you're upside down. Everyone was upside down at that point. 
but we're right side up now with, yep. with quite a bit of equity now, most of us. So okay, you have okay. to look at it that way. All right, Mr. Barton, <laughs> what is that? Okay. <laughs> I told you, Mr. Barton, your mom is long-winded. Remember I told you, I said she long-winded. Ah, oh, wrong. That's so bad. That's she okay. I'm just passionate that. about this. With you are. People this is true. Yeah, that's all right. Well. Hey, just, more, hey, just raise your finger when you need me to be when it's, when it's time up. Say, okay, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we're not gonna disturb wisdom, not at all. <laughs> okay, Professor Rock, question or comment? In Jama, Sante Sons, I just want to say this is very, very beautiful to see the relationship between mother and daughter. Oh, you good. Can, exactly. You can feel you can feel the love that mm -hmm. they have for each other and the mutual interest in each other welfare that they have. And, and that's a beautiful thing to hear and feel through a video and through a Zoom. I just have a couple of questions and, and, and perspectives. Cause you know, just, I mean, La Francis was a tar babe also. He went to college. Mm, right. and, so, and so, um, you know, uh, real estate is a tough game, even though, and I want to commend you on the book. The book is needed. Yes. And it should be a book that should be number one on Amazon for many young people who are not homeowners. Yeah. And even those that are interested in expanding their, turning their uh, houses into assets as they have Absolutely. laid it out. That's Absolutely. a beautiful thing to, um, to try to develop a road, a road map for young people interested in owning property. Yeah. Uh, or buying property because mm -hmm. you know in the country you really never own it because you still have to pay taxes on it. Yeah, right. right. After, after you pay the mortgage off, but the point is, uh, uh, it's it's a beautiful thing. Real estate is. is, is are, are any of y'all a member of the Black Real Estate Association with um, uh, Stan Jackson? Them? No, I'm not part of that, but I'm part of um, Cal Brief, I believe it's called. And it's part of an organization that um, I helped start, and um, it's a bunch of Black realtors, and we're, we're part of um, California Association of Realtors. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, and I think what you're talking about is like LA based, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah this I mean, one I know I spoke out. there a couple of times for Black History Month, and yes. uh, like, uh, the they, one I they were over there off of uh, near, uh, what is that? Uh, Behind uh, over there, behind the uh, the Crenshaw Mall, they had an office over there. Yeah, they're in LA. They're and not, I'm part of that one. So I'm part of the one that we helped create. Uh, part of the first meeting in all of California. And so our goal is to you know you connect realtors among like not just LA, but you know San Diego and uh, you know San Francisco and Alameda, and Pasadena, and, you know where like that. Okay, that's good. Uh, the reason I was asking, I'm just seeing if you were familiar with Stan. He went to Cops and I also, and uh, you know they're very active. They always have a program. Mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, the uh, 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 the air, you know the challenges. You know, waiting on escrow to close is is <laughs> is the thing. You know, anything can fall out of escrow. Yeah, well, this is, is the important part is to understand why it could fall out of escrow. Yes. Of course, yeah, you can't really do much about because at any point from the point that you enter into a contract until the day it funds and closes, like closed, is the, the buyer could say, I don't want to buy it no more, and the seller could say, I don't want to sell no more for any reason. Yeah, well, <laughs> well if you're not a cash buyer, yeah, you know, for investment or something. You know, you really don't realize that your mother was saying, and probably pretty sure I outlined in the book, all the paperwork and mm -hmm. all the material you have to put together mm -hmm. from your taxes to, mm -hmm. yes. you know, yes. and then the challenge of proof of down payment, mm -hmm. all of those type of things. Where'd you get the money from for your yes, 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 yes. Well, I mean, yeah, even, you know, all even of that. All of that raised issues and when people get in, they think, oh, I can just go buy a house and just right. give well, you some money and, you know, give you the down, like they're buying a car. But right. when it comes to property, it's not the same. Right. you know, you got to wait and do a title search and do yep. all those things yep. that make sure the property is clear, there's no liens and 
Yep. I mean, it's not it's, it's, it's not a thing that you can, uh, unless you're an investor and just gonna buy it uh, as is or something with right. cash. Right. Uh, right. You have to go through a lot in order yep. to buy some property. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, in other words, it's, it's, it's a good uh, two to three months or longer process. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't. It could be a 30 month. It doesn't month. have to be. It it, be. Yeah, well, it depends if, if on. you got your stuff together. Right. You know, well, yeah, yeah, it doesn't have also, to be. Also, if I could chime in on what you were saying, mm-hmm. loan officers, they, they need to let their people know up front also mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of what is required. And sometimes they aren't so certain. And I'm not saying that they can make or break it with that, but I tell loan officers and I tell people applying for loans. I told Brianna, the money you're using for your down payment, put it in one account and leave it alone. Because as an underwriter, we pull that apart. If you deposit, if you have $40,000 and you verify that lender sees, they bear, you, you, you say, I have $40,000 i am putting down on this property. Well, they want two months bank statements and the bank statements have to show consistency. So if one month you had 10,000 and then this month you have 40,000 as an underwriter, we pick that apart and where's this $30,000 from? Then we look at large deposits. Any large deposit that exceeds 50% of your income is questionable. You will have to explain and or source. And only $5,000 can be a gift, right? Pardon me? Only $5,000 can be a gift. Like if somebody wants to, it can be more than that. It can be more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you can gift the entire down. Practically, okay. you just have to, you have to put at least three percent of your own funds. Got it. But, but the, the, the issue is that houses, even though it's it's a good market right now, the houses are so high. Yes, yeah. they are. I mean, to they qualify, are. it's going yeah. to take multiple people. Are you with an exceptional income, right, in order to qualify? And my point mm-hmm. is, is that you know, many uh, 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 brothers and sisters. Uh, that book is very important to explain that, mm-hmm. but you know, uh, uh, you know what, what, per, wh- how much of a down you have to come up with for a, a five hundred thousand dollar home. Then the location, because right. you're buying a community, you're not just buying property. You know, right. that's why a house right. over here is, although it's bigger and prettier, yes. is less yes. than a house. In Beverly Hills, it's smaller right. and ugly. Yeah. Location, understand? location, location. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, 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 my point is, is that it's good that y'all are into this and that you're taking it upon yourself to uh, try to educate people so that they won't um, uh, yeah. get disheartened and yes. as you say, prepare. Yes. That's why I think that uh, it should be a part of uh, the high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I agree. And middle school I agree. education. At we least used high to school. have realty classes, but most of them were at community colleges. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that's where people went to get their training, and then. You, but right. even that, well, to get your real estate to become a real estate agent today it has changed a lot yes. mm-hmm. uh, than what it was five, six years ago, mm-hmm. or even ten. And now, you know, you got to take that state exam to be a mm-hmm. broker. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's, it's not as Y'all, y'all make it look so easy and simple because you've been in it, but it, <laughs> right, it's, it's not. not, it's not, it's not if, if it's something that's foreign to you and you're walking into, it can be quite challenging. Overwhelming. It can, yeah. it can be quite challenging. Yeah. There's a lot to learn and you're never going to learn everything, but it's right. so broad. It's so huge. No, you know, no, and, no, and, no, and, see, yeah. and, and as you were saying, the number one asset that most people have is their house. Yes. Their property. Yes. I mean, that's yes. the biggest asset, and that's biggest asset. That, that's that's their, that's that determines their wealth yes. in many ways. Uh, yes, uh, it does. Their, their property. Now, my 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 issue is, what, what about commercial property? Uh, do any of you ever deal with uh, buying commercial mm-hmm. property? Or just, no, I haven't gotten into or just, I have or just uh, vacant vacant land, vacant property like vacant land. 
is another thing that I've been looking into. Um, so I haven't gotten into commercial yet, um, mostly because it's not really the market for it right now. It is, let me say this, it is to buy it, but you're going to potentially sit on it for a little bit, depending on where it is. But as far as because of COVID, um, yeah. because of COVID right. I, I haven't uh, gotten into that yet because you have to have like a separate um, like licensing or like certification really to be able to sell commercial. But as far as land, um, there's a site that I look at and it's called Landwatch. Have you heard of it? Landwatch.com. Yeah. And it shows, I'll put it in the chat, and it shows all pieces of land um, that are for sale in the United States, pretty much. And um, I have it right here. You know, it's one of my tabs, always open. Always think about the next investment, of course. And you have anything from, you know, a little piece of land in, in Nevada that's, well, I shouldn't say a little, but a, pe a large piece of land in Nevada that's probably not as valuable because it's just desert, just a bunch of, you know, just nothing, to pieces of land in, in Hawaii, um, you know, lands, of course, that's in the millions, land that's in the hundreds, you know, the low thousands. So that's as far as land, that's stuff that I look at too. And, and the other issue is that trying to get the listing for property is very difficult for black realtors. Yes, so you have that to they get the list to be the one yeah. that lists the property for sale. Yeah. I and, agree. Go ahead. Yeah, it's one of those things that you have to, because I've done a few listings now, uh, and each of them have been the relationship. Like I've known them, we grew up together, we were friends. Mm -hmm. Um, they bought a house and then they, you know, wanted to sell it, or they bought a house through me and then wanted to sell it a few years later, like that. Um, and yes, that is definitely a little bit more difficult. Um getting into for sure is because as a realtor uh, you can sell the property but you have to share it with the person points with the person that has the listing is that correct um what do you mean like when you the listing the that's the cost he means the cost between the listing and the selling agent that's what he can mean is that what you mean yeah yeah i mean yeah. So, in so other if, words I, if 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 i'm an agent and I try to sell some property that someone else have listed. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't get all those paid. points for selling it. I have to share it I with the person that have right. listed. Well, I mean, uh, okay, so it's kind of, sort of. So this is how you, right. it, it depends on how you look at it. So like, as a selling agent, you determine what the person who's buying it agent is going to get. So how it right. works is, is you negotiate with the seller. You say, okay, we're going to either do 5 or 6%. Sometimes they want to do as low as four. Four is like, eh, you know, most people are not going to be bothered, but okay, five and six is standard. Um, so let's say it's 6%, right? As a selling agent, you then determine what the buying agent is going to get before they even put it on the market. So I say, okay, well, I want 4% and I'm going to give the buying agent 2% because I've done all this work. Or I'm going to take three and a half and I'm going to give them two and a half, right. whatever. But it's predetermined and you and it's predetermined and the, the, the seller knows and it's all in the contract that I'm yeah. gonna I'm taking I'm gonna do six percent, but then I'm gonna be um giving you know the buyer's agent uh two percent or two and a half percent or three percent, whatever you decide to do. So you share it, but it's just kind of it's, it's expected. What is, what is, it's a split what, cost, uh, is what I'm, it is. This is. My last point. i you know <laughs> sometimes the people that list the property want more than what, uh, what let's say if I took, them, I took uh, a buyer to buy some property that you listed mm -hmm. and you say, well, I say, well, I only want to give you two points or two points. You say, no, I want three. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't buy it. Is that correct? No. It's determined before the property hits the market. Right. If they're doing stuff right. like that, that's some really shady stuff, and you really shouldn't right. be bothered with it. To be honest, that's that's it's all in the contract. Like it's a legally because it's listed when they list the home. Yes, correct. Correct. When yes. the home is listed, the 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 listing agent puts on there what they're willing to pay the buying yeah. agent percentage wise. Not willing to pay what's been negotiated. Yeah. What, yeah. Those are like the, the terms. Yeah. This is what you're going to get. These are the that's terms. Okay. So if you don't want to do one and a half percent as a buying agent, you say, oh, they're only paying one and a half percent. You just I mean, you have some buyers who are like I've had buyers who are like really interested in properties that like one and one and a half percent. 
do I want to be bothered with it? No. Did we open escrow? No, thank God. You know, I'd be bothered with it because it was so it's like pennies there. But um, you know, you sometimes it's just what, what your buyer wants. Are you go, but the problem with that is a lot of buyers' agents aren't gonna be bothered with it. So now you so, so but if you have three percent buyer's commission, all these agents are like, come on, let's buy this house. There's more motivation there, if that makes sense. But now once you become an agent, mm -hmm. can you can you sell a house or buy, uh, sell a house in any area or are you designated as How far as, as because a lot of black realtors down. say they can't get in the Beverly Hills market. They well, can't they can't get, get into, into it because uh, women Hills right. market, they can't get in the yeah. Palace Verdes market. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They can sell houses in the in the in the community. But when they try to go and get some of them big sales, the million dollar sales. A lot of people starting out in reality, unless they have well, you know. Well, it's not that they can't get into it. It's right. just that it's really competitive. It's like, okay, for instance, Mr. Moore played basketball, right? He went to what, Cal State, Long Beach, Mr. Who's Moore, that? he played basketball. But then if you go to the N NBA, that's the big league. That's like people at Cal State, Long Beach, right. like, I can't get a break, you know, on the Wizards or the, the, the Lakers. Yeah. What it is, is, is it's like, that's the big leagues. Like only like, it's, only like, it's like a funnel, right? Like at the bottom, there's all these agents who can sell houses in Southgate and Compton and, you know, Paramount and Lakewood and Long Beach right here. And then you start going to the top. And then it's like, up here is like Beverly Hills, Culver City, Century City, you know, like places that are like- Pasadena. Pasadena, right. Like, Calabasas, right. If you have a friend yes. who happens be in, in the income that you can sell, you could sell yeah. anywhere in the Cal state of California. Anywhere I could sell. If my cousin says tomorrow she wants to buy a house in San Francisco, I could right. fly there tomorrow and sell her a house in the whole state. But it's just some markets, some like, I'll give you a prime example. I had a, a friend ask me yesterday for a recommendation for an agent in Pasadena. And I'm like, but I am an agent. And she is looking for somebody who is selling specifically in Pasadena. But the point is, is if she was a, had asked me to be her agent, I could sell her a home in Pasadena. So I could have broken into that market selling mm -hmm. into yeah. Pasadena. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people yeah. in the Pasadena area are not going to use somebody who is... Right, outside of the market area. area. Correct. And that's what it is. Now, you can see that on the show. Yeah. 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 A lot of nepotism. Yeah. Because if you know someone who wants mm -hmm. to buy a home in Beverly Hills right. and you know them, then you can be their representative, uh -huh. their representative agent. It, and that's where it all lies in or Palos Verdes or, mm -hmm. you know, wherever the, the location is. It, it's not that you can't. We, we're licensed anywhere in the state of California. Yeah. Exactly. It's just okay. getting into the areas, you know. Just, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Good dialogue there. So we're going to move to another question here. Okay. Okay. So you you're African American and you and uh -huh. you and your and you're in your early thirties, uh -huh. as far as I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> How do you view the condition of your peers of African descent? Ooh. You know what? I'll say this. Um. From those who I went to school with, I find that a lot of them are still trying to find their way. And what I mean is, is they don't necessarily have a career, at least what they would consider a career. I don't want to knock anybody's hustle or what they're doing, but they're doing jobs that are for the right now, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm just working somewhere. This is not something that I'm going to see myself in in 10 years. This is just the job, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of them are uh, starting out in some sort of business, doing either the candle businesses, massage uh, therapists, or whatever it may be. Um, but I find a lot of them from the public school system that I went to are still trying to find a way. Like, I mean, like 90 percent, in all honesty, from what I see, from my group. On the flip side, my husband, Brian, went to a private school. And all the overwhelming majority of his friends are doing big things. He's got one who's got a show on TV one. He's got one friend who is an, a top engineer at Turner, which built basically every building you see. They built the SoFi Stadium. He's got one friend who is um, 
um, a engineer, top accountant, you know, was being flown all over the world, Paris, and to do all their, their accounting for all the, their businesses. So I find that, you know, but they grew up in the, the, the La Nera, the View Park, the, you know, the Black, mm -hmm. quote unquote, the Beverly upper Hill, echelon. the yes. upper echelon of our community. But a lot of his friends are, if you know, as you say, career, they, they got something, they've set with it, and that, that they're, they're on the up and up. You know, he's got one friend who's a community outreach director for the Rams. I mean, like that's his favorite team, and he's a community outreach director for the Rams and the SoFi Stadium. So um, I find that in my community, my, you know, from the public school system, however you want to view it, maybe it's the, 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 the socioeconomics of maybe what we went to school with versus what Brian went to school with, um, they're finding their way. I do I think they'll find it? Maybe. I'm not quite sure. Um, versus, you know, all of Brian's friends married, you know, one kid is starting a family, trying to start a family, whatever it may be. So, um, yeah, it's just almost like two sides of the track, really, to answer your question. As far as my community, they're still, trying, they're still finding their way. Well, I'm, I'm taking that as a it's a maturity thing. Maybe. Maybe, they, maybe they haven't mature and it's due to a lot of dynamics that that occur in our society. So, you know, I don't know if it's a maturity thing or if it's that they already had a, a upper leg in a lot of cases. Does that make sense? No, like, I was, I'm just saying in general, I'm saying that a lot of people may be, uh, you know, not knowing what they want to do yet as far as career rise because of the the lack of and then yeah. also you know it's easy to to from from my experience in in teaching it's easy to join the in crowd of non-achievement yeah versus you know that's true. linking that's up true. with the kids that are want to want to do something it's, it's yeah. majority of the kids want to be in the in the negativity or in versus the cool the positive. Like, Cool. Yeah, right. yeah. So it's it's uh, I'm sure it's a challenge. Think, it's think a challenge. The cool, kids, the cool kids, we probably eat no matter what generation we in. All the cool kids is a lot of them really didn't do nothing <laughs> from high from high school. I mean, I mean, yeah, no, lot, it's true. Not all of them. There's definitely cool kids who in, turn out to do some really great things, but a lot of them is is still trying to find their way or still trying to hang on. Like they peaked in high school, you know, so. Well, yeah, and you find that going back to reunions and you see those that were just not nobodies, but just little simpletons. And here they are doctors and lawyers and, you know, they, you know, very established individuals. And it's like, wow, you know, it's a wow factor. But and then you have those that were most likely to succeed and the successors and the this and the jocks and the, you know, the pop because it's a popularity thing when you're young. Yeah. It's very about popularity and they end up being you know <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think i'll say but you know, we all know we've all seen a few of them yeah <laughs> okay thanks <laughs> all right so uh, uh another thing i know about you and what you've told me is you travel often yes is there a particular place you would like to to revisit and why? Ooh, you know what? I think about revisiting um, either. Oh, that's a hard one actually, because there's a, so many places that I liked. Well, um, just give me a couple. Okay, I'll give, one I'll give you two. top two. Yeah, top, uh, top two. One place is Costa Rica, and that's mostly for the lifestyle. Um, they have a, a thing called a blue zone. I don't know if you have you heard of the term blue zone before. No. So blue zone is an area of the world. I think there's four or seven something like that. Um, uh, what's the place? The city called Mom, and uh, not far from here. You know what I'm talking about? Loma Linda. Oh, Loma Linda. Yeah. Loma Linda is one. There's a city in uh, Costa Rica. That's another. And there's two others. I can't think of it. The healthiest <laughs> people in the world. Correct. You're on yes. average they expected to live longer because the stress is less and they just naturally eat a little bit and better. And their diets, yes. And their diets better. Exactly. So 
-hmm. Costa Rica would be one because of the lifestyle and the, the low stress and you know you're there to live and not working to go make money not ca caught up in consumerism mm -hmm. and the other place would actually be Kenya and it will probably be to do it right because we did a safari but we didn't necessarily do like the you know one where you camp and then you, you know seeing all the big old animals and stuff but what I really liked about it was you look like everybody else. Like like countries like that, I truly appreciate. Jamaica, even the Dominican, you know, I mean, as far as the skin tone, you know, I, Brian and I, we just fit right in. Like nobody's gonna look at us sideways when we're there. Yeah. Not the minority, you're the majority. Um, and so places that are like heavily melanated, I truly, mm -hmm. um, I feel a sense of like, oh wow, okay. Like I don't have to, I'm not, I don't stick out here for, for other reasons. I, I'm just here, I'm just there, you know what I mean? So Costa Rica and in Kenya, but probably Maasai Mara this time instead of Nairobi. Okay, that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. Costa Rica, all right. Okay, now this is the last question, and then I'm gonna go back to the panel for questions and comments. Okay, okay. What is your view of black people in general in the United States? Lost. Ooh. Uh, go into a little detail, please. Um, I think we have, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us have uh, uh, the foundation, right? We've got the, we, you know, even in mom, mom, your generation, if you, you guys, you saw people, carpenters and woodworkers and, and building things and had businesses and they, they, you know, community, if you didn't have any sugar or you didn't have to, you just went next door and asked your neighbor. It was yes. like this, sense of, you know, it was like this sense of like communal, like kind of what other cultures have now that we've just right. yeah. lost our way yeah. completely. We have lost that. Yes. And a lot of us have gotten this idea that, you know, because the TV has told us we can't trust us, we don't trust one another now. And, and then when we make it, you know, we go and we do some success, we buy properties, we do this, we move to an area that doesn't look like us. And then we mad yes. that like, it didn't work out in our favor or we're mad that, uh, or that they treated my kid a certain way. Yeah, my kid a certain way or my kids but you only uh, have them that up in the head and doesn't understand why they have, you know, nappy hair and it's not straight yes. and it's not long yes. down their back, you know? And it's like, it all kind of, you know, messed up in the head. So, um, I personally feel that, um, of course, that we are the original people, but that we are like a king that has been locked up and, and brainwashed, if that makes sense. And we just have like lost it. Do I think it's going to come back eventually? Absolutely. But um, Mr. Moore, I know you want to go to Egypt, but Egypt is, I mean, man, like, it's in a way it's life changing. You're like, wow. <laughs> as much as they try to label Egyptians as white people now, and that is what the census has, Egyptians are labeled as white people now. Um, you really do see that they were far, far beyond their years. Like filtration yeah. systems that could take water from the Nile and bring it up and and make all the water and, and you know cultivate the plants. I mean, just things that are like. Like they, they still can't figure out how they made those pyramids to this day. They still they, can't. It's absolutely they don't know. exactly. And they don't. As, know. as small as those those each individual bricks look, each one goes to about to about my rib cage. It's huge. Okay, so um, the point of me saying that is is that that as a community, we are lost. I mean. I think I, I think it's a shift coming, but I think as what happens is as soon as the shift happens, you get the, the war on drugs, right? Magically, the drugs in our community dropped off, and we all jacked up, like in the '90s and the '80s, you know. Um, so I'm hoping there's no war on drugs coming anytime soon. But I feel that it's anytime we try to do better for ourselves, I find um, I think it 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 uh, yeah. They something something magically comes out of nowhere and we're all of a sudden the villain again. And I also want to note that I think that we are the original people of the United States. And that's the last thing I'm going to say. Okay. Well, we got a, we got a historian on here. We got two historians and then we have, uh, we, well, we got a lot of historians on here. So now tell me this, this is the last thing. What contribution can you make to get us 
back to that point where we were, where we had this community that was together and we able to share and barter. And what what can you do personally? I'm doing that, it right now, or I'm trying to do it. Trying to get to, because I think to me, okay. although, although we say it's not all about money, it's all about money, at least in the United States. Okay, other countries it may not be, but it's all about money here. Let's just be honest. Any, if you, you can get out of murder, you can, you know, buy the whole half of the country, you, you know, it's all about, it all rolls back to money here. You can be so, president. <laughs> you can be president, exactly. Yeah. I think, I think we have more financial uh, strength. We would not be in the situation we are right now. And if we also had a, a sense of community, if we had a sense of community, right? Where we stuck together and like, if something happened, it was like, okay, we're not gonna deal with this company no more. We would have a lot more power. But a lot of us is like, oh, you know, whatever they did that, I don't care. I'm still gonna shop there. Okay, well, that's not how we gonna get anywhere. So anyway, so I think having more financial strength and more financial backing and two, I think educating those who are willing to take it in. Of course, like I said, there's going to be those people who don't want to hear it, they don't care. Okay? But if I have those five students a year who I can be like an inspiration and change their thinking about how and who they can be in life, that's the win in my book. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, let me go to the panel now. Brother Hembrick, mm -hmm. questions, comments? Brother, okay, there he is. I'm on the phone with my daughter, but uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm in the real estate game, not as an employee, but investor, I guess you should say. Been in it quite a while. I know Miss Arnold, uh, who was the first black realtor in the city of Compton. Mm -hmm. uh, and I bought my first house to Francis, which was uh one of those special first time buyer programs and. Mm -hmm. Uh, Miss Arnold found a loan for me. I went by there and hollered at her since his passing. He's still working strong. Yeah. And uh, I'm a teacher. I retired from Centennial. Well, not Centennial, but Compton Unified. But I worked Centennial like 20 years. And uh, I used to teach, uh, uh, you know, property ownership to my students all the time. Okay. If, if you if you don't buy no property, you, you ain't even in the game in America. Nope, at all. That's right. And, uh, you know, we went out and cleared a field one time. It was full of weeds, and this other teacher was trying to get a a, a whole culture class on, on campus. So we cleared all these weeds. So I must have had six pile of weeds, you know, about six feet high. So I was telling the kids uh, about, you know, uh, uh, keeping your property up. And this is the reason why a lot of people don't really care to hear us, because you know, because we let it run down. And when you let it run down, that's tens of thousands of dollars that's coming out your pocket. I say you might as well let somebody just walk up on you and rob you for twenty thousand dollars if you allow that stuff to persist in your community. But anyway, uh move right along. I, I don't I don't know if you know Ron uh Ron Cooper. R.S. Cooper and Associates. Anyway, he's a longtime broker and whatnot, friend of mine. Uh, was the president of the uh, 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 Black Realtor Association for a few years. They all go over there on soccer. He's kind of semi-retired now. I think his daughter's in now. But uh, property is the way to go. Uh, I have several myself. Uh, I know my first one I bought was for $61,000 back in 1985. Wow, <laughs> and I and I have two other income properties in my house that I live in. I bought it for like six something. I was worth about a million dollars. So I know the yeah. game. Uh, I kind of held on, you know, to those properties because my daughter yeah. wants to be a doctor, and she went to private school, but she's from Compton. But mm -hmm. a private school, I'm telling you, something about it. She she. She went to school with all the little Jews out there in Long Beach, so <laughs> I was coming up on the game from Jump Street. And the thing I say, but the difference in these schools is exposure. Yes. Those kids exactly. are exposed to so many different things. Exactly. And the kids in Compton can't even go on a field trip. Exactly. And, and, they don't know better. Exactly. Lost. I, I had talked to many of them, 
And they had never been to Play Del Rey Beach, which is right down the street. Right. Man. They're, kind of, they're kind of victims of the neighborhood, kind of yeah. prisoners, so to speak. Yeah. And, uh, mm. Don't want to go, scared to go. Mm-hmm. I was a coach also. You know, black colleges taking brothers, you know, left and right, if they can find some. And the, I had a bunch of them who got hooked up, but they were scared to leave the community. Wouldn't go. Mm-hmm. Wow. A basketball player went to the, some little school down in Alabama, didn't stay a semester, came right back. Just, uh, wow. you know, uh, what's this program called? Posse. I like those kind of programs so kids can go to college together and they can lean on each other to make sure yeah. they get through and that sort of thing. But uh, anyway, uh, I commend what you're doing. I, I like the little book. And I got a question. <laughs> Thank you. I got a question. When you when you gonna become a broker? You know yeah. what? Um, I actually was gonna do that. You know, I have, I had just I just finished grad school in December, like just finished. So it kind of like held. I held that off because it was just a little bit too much to do all that. Trying to sell prop, trying to sell real estate, be in grad school, do student teaching. It was just I would have I would have no hair. So I'm actually gonna set that goal for this year. I was just thinking about that. I'm gonna set that goal for this year. That you know, I always believe in you know, once you accomplish one goal, what's the next one? Like all consistently creating new goals. So that's the one for this year. 2022 is gonna be my year to become a broker. And then next year you'll see my my name in the back right here. Say bring me realty. <laughs> okay. Ooh, 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 you, uh, are you uh, do you work independently now? Or? Yeah, uh, I, I work for. <laughs> I work for um, the real estate group in uh, Torrance because you know when you're an agent you can't be by yourself. But I will be independent uh, once I become a home broker. Yes, so next year sometime I guess I'll become a broker this year and then set up the paperwork for next year. Excellent. Excellent. All right, brother. My son, right. about through with the questions. I, I heard some about history. I was on the phone with my daughter, and I didn't hmm. catch what the historical aspect was. Oh. About us being the first people in this country, is was that it? Yes, I believe that. I don't care what anybody tells me. Could you say that again? I said I believe it wholeheartedly. I don't care what anybody says. I feel like we were here, and I feel like the you know others okay. are really trying to make it to where we don't understand that. That they try to bring you know whitewash history or um, you know always get rid of certain things. I feel like we were we were already here. A lot of people already here. There's a couple of books you can check out. One is uh, uh, they came before Columbus about the Omex. You know, mm-hmm. all, all those Omex kids they found down in Veracruz, Mexico, that are on display in the Natural History Museum in New York City. They're like eight, nine feet tall uh, and carved out of black stone. And it's another mm-hmm. book written by a European believe it or not. It's called America BC, and he was a professor at Harvard or Yale somewhere, and and and. Uh, and they fired him for writing a book. Oh, of course. Yeah. And, you, and that's what I'm, I think that's what happens whenever it, the, the kind of truth comes out. It's like, oh, you know, we got to shuffle. You know, you know, you know, Dr. Ben was fired like 47 times from various universities. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yes, uh, we, not just the United States, we're the first people yes. everywhere. Oh, yeah. Everywhere on this planet. I know. I think, you know, others are actually us and, you know, they've lost, you know, the melanin because you can't have that when it's cold right. and whatever, you know, I think we were also, the, uh, you know, we also naturally have straight hair, some of us, just like a lot of us have blue eyes, right? And then they just have made it as though like only certain class of people have it, but I don't think that that's true either. I think that we all have those features. It's just... We, but it, yeah. it, it's kind of dependent on the region you grew up in. Uh, yeah, it's called it's called uh, acquired characteristics. Mm-hmm. Twa people, the Hutu, the Kalahari, or the Bushmen, and the and the Europeans put a negative spin on them, calling them pygmies. Those mm-hmm. are were everywhere first, and still, and and, and actually, they're still in those places today. But they they usually living high up in the mountains and whatnot. Yeah, but. Uh, mm-hmm. The hair and eye thing, uh, like I, I have some pictures of some original uh, Aborigines and, and Tasmanian people, and they have straight blonde hair, straight exactly. hair. Uh, exactly. But that, that's, that's kind of, you know, not the norm. Uh, but what happened was uh, when we ventured up into Europe, 
growing up in those ice ages, you know, we had to right. adjust to the environment. And right. the straighter and those got longer and all that. Right. And, uh, and uh, Brother Martin wrote a book called uh, 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 Revolution of the Caucasoid that deals with that uh, to a degree. And then another guy, Michael Bradley, who wrote The Iceman's Hair. So uh, you are correct in what you're saying. And uh, I guess I'll talk long enough. It's not my show, it's your show. So let me pass it. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank, thanks for that, Brother Hembrick. Brother Machenda. Brother Machenda, he could have stepped away. Brother Doctor. No, uh, good information. Um, you know, I have my real estate license too. I was a real estate agent mm. back in the back in the mid nineties. Um, yeah, so you just bring some bad the bad memories. And, you know, <laughs> you know some, somewhere. Yeah, where I was sad. You know, I. You know, if you didn't know someone, you wouldn't sell them the house. Because yep. whites would not come to me. Blacks couldn't afford it. Yep. So I had this, this real estate license. I was working with Caldwell Banker. Started out with this Paradigm property. Been with the Caldwell Banker. And I should have went with this guy who tried to get me to sell all this vacant land in California City before they blew it up. He, he had this vision. I should have went with him. And But I ended up hooking up with another brother who had a license and he took a bunch of us blacks out to Arizona in the mid nineties when you get the HUD homes for $500. That's how you was down. That's all you needed. And I, I invested a lot in, in Arizona. Uh, but yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Only time I got blacks or whites coming to me is when everybody else rejected them. They want me to come do something illegal, <laughs> you know, with the paperwork. Yeah. yeah you know? right. And another thing I, I, I couldn't do was I was just too honest. You know, you have that real estate thing where I learned, you know, my broker was telling me, hey, it's the three house rule. You take them to one bad house that's tore up that you want your dog living in. Then you take them to another one that's just okay. Then you take them to the one you want to dump. And I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I, I couldn't be that dirty. There's a lot of shady people in there. A lot of shady. I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do all the little shady things in real estate. Yeah. So I just let my license last. I, I just couldn't do it. I was more better with just doing investors, you know, just putting up the money. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I, I feel you. You 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 doing it? Uh, happy for you. Yeah. Get your broker license. Get you some agents. Train yeah. them right. Get them out there doing it. Like I said, back then, that's when the military base was closing down in the 90s and everything with the HUD and the VA. Right, right. You know, right. I remember that. I got my license right before things started crashing. Yeah. You know, and I just, oh, I was so frustrated. I mean, I went to all the schools. The test was easy. Passed on the first. I was the first one to finish. Got up, turned my stuff in. and You know, but uh, I'll never go back doing that in real estate, you know, as, a, as an agent. There, there are laws now, a lot of different yeah. laws. Oh, yeah, I, I got so frustrated, I left it alone. <laughs> I just came doing more than investors. Really? But, uh, yeah, I was just so excited about our people. You know, you come to me after everybody's telling you, you know, you want me to do something illegal. You know, mm. but uh, I'm glad you guys are doing it. And uh, hopefully see that when you come back on, you have your broker's license. Oh, I will. Hopefully, you motivate me to go back and get my life. Yeah. Come work for you. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be good. That'll be good. That's why we're doing this, to make those connections. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Miss Bonita Meeks, oh. question, comments for your daughter? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess the questions, comments that I have, I kind of already know. I'm just thinking, uh, no, I just, uh, I'm just very proud of her. Um, she's been a very um, motivating and inspiring to me because I've, I've been in the mortgage industry since the 80s. And I would always speak of occasionally, oh, I need to get my real estate license. Oh, I'm going to get my real estate license. And, you know, I never would. I'd never pursue it. And so I was off and she was off at one time and she was signing up for it. And she said, mom, come on, 
you know, just come on. You have the time now. We need to do this. You should have, you should have had your license. And she was right. I should have had my license, you know, and I have it. I'm not very active with my license as I should be, but it's there. And when I retire, it's there. I can do this. And she's going to come with me real and we're going to get her at yeah. and get her at the Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and I can, I can do loans and she can do the real yeah. estate. And, you know, or we can do, you know, both. I don't think you, you can't do both. You can't have your NMLS number and your real estate yeah, yeah. on the same deal. I don't yeah, think. Okay. Yes, yeah. now? Okay. Yeah, Crystal Dan, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's double money. Yeah, it is. That's quite because you get you make a pretty penny on those loans too. You get about yeah, you're two percent. Max is three now. They cap that too because yeah, now, yeah, the the society's changed. Uh, the, the it's changed a lot in the lending industry after that big meltdown. So right. there's not a, there's not as much fraud as it used to be. People you know people speak of fraud, but it's not as prevalent because everything tracks back to the individual. You are liable and responsible for what you do so yeah. if you do a shady loan it has your number and your name on it and right. they come for you. yeah they come back to you so that's the that's the, the way things are but i am i'm very proud of her she's very motivating she go, she always did go after what she wanted always always the way she is now she was that way as a young girl she was that way as a little something you know, I, when she tried out for cheerleading, Laura, we're going, back, we're going back. I'm doing the cheerleading <laughs> story. Well, she was in Pop Warner. We did Pop Warner. And then she was going into high school. So the first year in high school at Lakewood, you couldn't cheer, you know, your freshman year. They want you to get acclimated. So I took her, I dropped her off at a football game one night and she said, uh, oh, and then when I picked her up, she said, Mom, I'm going to be a cheerleader. I said, really? She said, oh, yeah, I just love this about it. And she's giving me all these things that she was really inspired with and what she wanted to do. She tried out. She was cheerleading. And she had to try out every year. You did. And she was a cheerleader every year. And the things that she wanted, like, you know, she had, she came back home. She told me when she left college, you know, when I, she said, I just want to come home. She says, I have friends who want to get apartments and share and, you know, share rent. She says, I just want to come home. I just want to buy me something. Well, the, you know, the, the, the market had crashed. What was happening is there were properties, but people didn't have the money. You know, it's always one or the other. So she took her time and she kept searching and checking and she would check the market. And she, she told me she was ready. I was like, really? She said, she said, yeah, yeah, I, I want to get I said one paycheck a month and living at home. Yeah. Living at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She saved one paycheck a month living at home because she's living at home. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't charge her rent. She's had to, you know, do some, pay some little minor things around, you know. So it worked for her and she used it to her advantage. And she, she you know, we got together and she got... Um, she got a little condo and it, and it worked, you know, I found her program 3% down, no MI. What's and MI? that's unusual. MI mortgage. is mortgage insurance. And okay. that's added to any loan that is when they finance over 80%. Anything under 20%. People don't know that. Right. If you put, if you put less than 20% down, there's right. mortgage insurance. insurance. So a monthly additional cost. So, so the less you put down, like if you put two or three percent down, you know, you, you're gonna pay a higher premium. The premium is higher. And you pay it monthly, it's added into your mortgage to your PITI, and it's removed when your property establishes the equity to put you back at 80% LT loan to value, meaning you right. have 80% equity. That's what it that means actually. Right. You know, okay. so uh, it comes off. It can come off. Uh, there used to be a cap on years, how long you had to have it. Uh, I don't think there's, I, th I know it's at least two years now because properties are escalating, but in, in value rap more rapidly. 
but the MI c comes off. And once that comes off, you can refinance it or contact your lender, and say, you know, remove this MI, the mortgage insurance, and they do some assessment on properties and determine that you have sufficient value for them to remove it. But she got no MI and no no points. I mean, it was a, it was a beautiful, it was a sweet deal. I haven't seen anything else like it, you know, and 15 still on there. That program know. is still available and it's in the book too. The yeah. Is, I, and I tell young people about it. I tell them about it. I tell anyone about it looking for yep, a too. home first time buyer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So she's been my inspiration. Well, that's, that's excellent. <laughs> You, you're basically looking at yourself right there. <laughs> That's excellent. And you know, I, I want to take a little stock in her because she was with yep. me for about four months. Yeah. She I, really enjoyed it. It seems like she, she appeared to really yeah. enjoy it. So, so yeah. she's a part of my, my, my daughter crew. Oh, great. Four only daughters. He has like, what, four, four girls or more? I got five daughters. Five. So oh, you, really? Yep. So Ooh. she she makes six. She's a she's oh, one of them too. Five girls. Yeah. I'm honored. Yeah. So we're gonna end with Professor Ra. Professor Ra, question, yeah. comments. Uh, again, appreciate what's been said. If I understand correctly, I want to really say a Sante Sante to everyone that participated tonight. It's a very good session. You know, it's not that. Black people are lost. <laughs> Most people in America are lost. Yeah, that's that's very true. You know, I will give you that. And, and a lot of it that's is very true. Uh, I think Carter G. Woodson said it in the 30s, the miseducation. Yeah. And the culture crisis. The education. Yeah. And that happened with becoming Americanized. Mm -hmm. They want people to be ignorant because yeah. that's okay. how they make money off. And it's how you control them as well and tell them what to do. And, and all of that. So it's mm -hmm. not it's not that because we black and we disunified, mm -hmm. uh, these people just tore up their capital. That's true. <laughs> this is true. You know, they fought a civil war. You know? This is so, true. Um, so uh, we, we, you know, we just have to, uh, some of us uh, are, are not as fortunate to have such a, a brilliant mother like you. This is true. Uh, and, and to come up in our community and then come up Thank you. with an uh, economic and business focus. Yeah. Uh, bo uh, both of y'all should be commended because you can have a good mom and they can work hard with their kids, but the kids can still turn out not yeah. the way you want them. And so oh, yeah. y'all are a beautiful couple as far as oh, thank uh, you. Uh, representing um, what hard work would, would do. We're in a, a, a challenging time because you know a lot of people bought property and lost property for it for mm -hmm. things of that yeah. thing. But, um, you know you get in over your head yeah mm -hmm. you know and uh, you know like you said one thing to buy how you keep it as yes. brother uh joe was uh Hendrick was saying about maintenance of your property yes then having a vision of, of flipping it and or either refinancing to go into other property or building on land yeah, when you buy the property, you know. So it's, it's a lot to real estate. And that's my point. And mm -hmm. that book, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just uh, hoping that, uh, you know, it would be shared uh, that and that it'd be an inspiration for other young people. And I'm, I'm hopeful that you and your mom will continue your work in uh, uh, what 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 school district do you work for? Uh, I am technically a substitute teacher right now at Long Beach Unified and Comp Unified, so I work for both. Okay, so okay, but so so you you teach in the communities. Yeah. Yeah. So I will okay. um, have some sort of position in August. That's the goal. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, I'll but, but, Okay, that, that's that's a good thing because one of the greatest. Well, you're a teacher. You know, you're teaching people about real estate in your book. Huh? You know, so so that that's it. That's the greatest role in life, teaching. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And so I just want y'all to keep up your work, and hopefully that you can come back on the program uh, whenever you have some new information or some information you think we can share with our listeners and followers of the Conscious Corner. Or uh, the uh, community education network, 
We also want y'all to become a part of it. This uh, Monday, we're going to be honoring Dr. Martin Luther King. Okay. Uh, you know, his birthday is Saturday, but it's going to celebrate it Monday. It's going to celebrate it Monday. And uh, we're going to be discussing his legacy and allowing people to make comments. Because without the struggle of Black people, Black realtors wouldn't be successful or have the opportunity yes. they have now. Right. Somebody Absolutely. paid the price. That's why they started the Black Realtor Association because of racial discrimination right. in re re uh, real estate. Right. Um, and they broke down barriers uh, right. and paved the way. And even working in banks and yep. uh, other than a, a, a cashier and moving up to a loan officer and a loan preparer and, a, and things of this nature, all of that came with struggle. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so uh, 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 you know we're going to be talking about that and and the his and the contributions of the civil rights movement and and the uh, and the uniqueness of Martin Luther King vision for us uh, to, uh, uh, to 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 move forward and hopefully y'all will join us Monday at six o'clock okay. and if you have any comments okay. uh, uh, you know information you would like to share. You spent. You said a lot about uh, uh, black his, uh, history, and there's a lot more to it, as Brother Hendrick was saying. Right. Uh, uh, you know, how did the people who built the pyramids end up in projects? You know, it's not. It's not. It's right. not an example. Right. Uh, the disproportionate amount of black people that, you know, can't find loans even though they qualify, and they still get turned down. Mm -hmm. many, many situations and your mom I'm pretty sure can attest that, that that is struggle you know uh, but it's just a beautiful thing to have people like y'all in this industry with the integrity and the intent of really showing people how to find a good deal and how to get into uh, economic development by purchasing property and purchasing a home yeah, because uh, you don't have to worry about people inspecting it. You don't have to worry about getting people on the property. rent, the rent that, that yeah. every month. You don't yes. have to do about yes. all that, and yes. it's a sense of stability. Yes, it is for your children. Yes, uh, to be they know that that house is gonna be there when they come. And they ain't got to start moving and packing up and moving. And, and as a parent, time. you know, it it puts an ease on you as a parent. For the same reasons, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Hey, stability. You know, like I said, stability is very important. Very I have important. six children. Um, oh wow! And uh, you know, uh, I, I, I had to change. <laughs> you know, I had to change <laughs> and become a real daddy. <laughs> you know, and uh, that, that that was a transformation. The kids will make you do that if you really love them. Yeah, and uh, yeah. the sacrifice your mother has made uh, and invested in yes. you yes. Is, is paying dividends. And I no, we we'll have to pay her back. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, you paying her back by being a good right. That's right. That's, that's, that's all she you wants do. you to do is be able yes. not, to, not to be laying on her couch. <laughs> 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 drinking up the, drinking up the hey, juice. Hey, so. or fighting over washing the dishes. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. But I love your natural. I love your natural. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, that's that's beautiful. That's All right, uh, Rasha Key, I'm good. All right, thank you guys. <laughs> All right, so I appreciate you, Miss Brianna Meeks oh, and Mom, Mom Miss Benita too. Meeks. Great, and, this uh, has been wonderful. Yes, yeah. and we and we gonna talk about you coming on as a featured guest, you know, pretty soon here. And well, we could uh we could tap your your information, Miss well, Miss me? Mosby Meeks. Yeah. Oh sure, sure, yeah. sure. When you yeah. start speaking of loans, I like to 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 put out there whatever I can so people can find out. Uh, I told you she bought the house. she bought my house. I just paid for it. She knew exactly what to do and what to look for and what you couldn't do and what you had. I mean, I, it was like a blueprint. Like it was, and then remember you told the lady she she basically told me what my mortgage payment was gonna be before the underwriter did down to the penny. I was like, okay, your mortgage is gonna be this amount, and it was exactly that amount. Right, and it was interesting because the the mortgage lender she said, oh wow, you know you you would you would. She and the uh, loan officer said, "Wow, you were so close to the to the exact uh, you know uh, uh, payment and DTI." But I know, 
I know how they're looking at it on the inside. And that's what a lot of people don't know is how they're looking at it on the inside, how they yeah. look at it uh, once yeah. they get it. What are they, you know, looking at it to, you know, a lot of people yeah. think, oh, they just don't want to do this or don't want to do that. Some things they can't do. Some things are due to guidelines. Some things right. are like, you can do FHA that you can't do conventional and you can't, right. do, you know, it, it has to, to do with a lot of different things. Yeah, and, when you get your episode, you're going to tell them all about it. Yeah. Okay, okay. then. All right. So I appreciate both of you and I appreciate the, the panel. And next week, we got a brother, uh, Dr. Mike is coming back on. I think it's his fourth, fourth appearance. And his topic is back to the future do we need to go ancient or modern as people so that's very interesting mm -hmm. that's yeah. one of that's the historian joe hendrick's buddy that's coming back on and he's my buddy too we all worked together for some years okay and so you so uh that should be interesting so each one teach one in conscious corner everybody good night good night thank you mr moore good night.